All right. Hello, students. Welcome to our first lecture of the year. Today, we're going to start off with five themes of geography. So you can use the note sheet in the packet I gave you today in class, or you can use the sheet or the Google slide that I created and posted in Google Classroom to take these notes. So that's totally up to you. So there are five themes in total of geography that you need to know this year. Before we get to those, we want to talk about what is geography and what does geography mean? Well, the prefix geo stands for earth and the suffix graphy stands for study of. So if you put those together, you have geography, which stands for the study of earth. And so that's what we're going to be looking at. What do the landforms look like? How is the earth shaped? And all that good stuff. So there are five themes when we look at studying the earth. And those themes are movement, region, location, human environment slash interaction, and place. If you notice, all of the orange letters spell out Mr. Lip. M-R-L-I-P. Mr. Lip are your five themes of geography. The first theme is movement. And that talks about, or when we're looking at the movement theme, that addresses how things, people, and ideas get from one place to another. An example of movement would be human movement. Currently, in today's world, we move in cars, planes, boats, and to different countries. Back in the day, where we're going to be studying, people used boats, horses, walking trails, and, to, and they moved to different countries or empires as well. The movement of information today is different from the movement of information um, in history. So I'm going to look at the movement of information today because I think you understand it a little bit better. So the way information moves today is with the newspaper, internet, social media, and by word of mouth. So from one friend to another. The movement of goods has to deal with like importing and exporting. So here you see trucks, trains, boats, and planes. Think of things like Cars that come from a different country, or toys that come from a different country, or cell phones that come from a different country, or grocery items that come from a different country. So that's like the movement of goods we're talking about. The next theme of geography is a region, and a region is an area with common characteristics. So here's a map of the United States broken into its general regions, and these regions sh share common characteristics. The example of region I chose is the Basque region in Spain. You guys know I lived in Spain, and this is, two of my favorite cities are up here, San Sebastian and Bilbao. I know, useless information, whatever. Um, but so this is the region I chose and the characteristics it shares is that it's in the north of Spain and the south of France. They all speak the same language. They have special holidays and all of their economy is based on the Pyrenees mountains right here that divide France and Spain. Location is your next theme and the location is where a place exists on earth. There are two types of location you need to know. You need to know absolute location and relative location. An absolute location is an exact location using a street address or latitude and longitude coordinates. The example I gave you in the picture is the address for the White House, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Relative location is described by landmarks or direction. It is close to the South Point Casino or it is near town square. Those would be relative. You're saying what it's close to, not the exact location. So right now we're going to do a practice for absolute or relative location. So you need to number on your notes somewhere from one to eight. I'm going to read this statement and you write down if that's an absolute or relative location. 
Number one, the gas station is located near Walmart. Number two, Agassiz Prep is located at 1201 West Lake Mead Boulevard. Number three, the restaurant is about 20 minutes away. Number four, the city is located at 34 degrees north and 86 degrees east. Number five, my house is at 119 Stanbridge Lane. That's not my real house address. Number six, I am flying to the east coast. Number seven, the police station is next to the library. Number eight, Shelly's house is at 1505 Buffalo. I will be checking the answers to these eight questions for your homework check this week. Human interaction and environment is how the environment and humans interact with each other. Humans can either modify, adapt, or depend on an environment. So in the picture, you see these rice patties from China, which is how the humans adapted and modified and depended on the environment. So human environment. To modify is to change the environment around you. So think of when you get too hot or too cold. If you're too hot, you turn on the air conditioner. If you're too cold, you turn on the heater. You're modifying the environment around you. Adapting is changing you. So humans change themselves to live in an environment. So when it's cold, we might put on winter clothes. When it's hot, we might wear shorts as opposed to a big parka jacket. And depending on the environment. So some people depend on boats or ferries to get from the islands they live on to the mainland. So here's an example of a ferry in New York from Staten Island where New Yorkers from Staten Island take this ferry to get into Manhattan to go to work. It takes cars and people. Our last theme is place. Place has to do with the physical and human aspects of a location. The human aspect is going to deal with what languages they speak, what population is there, how many people live there, work there, go to school there, and what their customs are. Here's a population pie chart. The physical aspect of place is going to deal with landforms, climate, wildlife, and to the right are a few landforms and natural resources. That is the end of our lecture today. You will need these notes to complete your five themes foldable in class the rest of the week.